This is Philip. Today on the homestead, we are picking our corn and we are digging potatoes. So we have got a few problems that we have to deal with today in, uh, in uh, picking the corn and the potatoes. Uh, number one, it is hot. It is very hot out here and so nobody's really waiting for me to get my camera and everything together. So a lot of the work uh, part of it, my film just got messed up and I was like, forget this. I just dove into it and started picking too. And uh, so a lot of the work part of that is actually... Uh, not going to make it into uh, this video. However, so that's the thing. It is very hot out here. And uh, of course, you know, there are two other things that uh, problems that creep up whenever you deal with uh, corn or potatoes. You know, corn, you have to be very careful what you uh, say and do around them because corn has ears and of course potatoes have eyes. So our potatoes we plant in rows and of course we have dug all those rows out here and uh, this is where they've been harvested where you just see dirt. The rows are maybe 15 feet long. There's about 20 rows here. Now from here over these are not harvested yet. They got a little out of control with the weeds. Uh, so yeah, it's a little bit weedy, but we are getting lots of potatoes. If you've seen our apple, uh, our apple harvest video where we harvest our apple trees and make applesauce, then you'd be familiar with our little tracked transporter. We filled that thing with potatoes out of these rows. What do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, five, six, six, seven rows have filled that thing with potatoes this for about three days we'll put them out during the day bring them in in the evening we don't want them to get wet the idea is to let them dry a little bit uh, get down some of the moisture content and they, they'll store better and longer over the winter the next thing to harvest is the corn and as you can see we have these little posts at the end of each row well our corn got blown down and so we stuck it back up. We put a post at each end and ran some uh, line back and forth just to help them stand back up. Sometimes corn will stand back up after it blows down, but sometimes it doesn't. So we did that earlier in the season when it got blown down. Now it's time to harvest. So with the potatoes, there isn't really much to do other than that. Just uh, dig them up and uh, let them cure in this you don't want to leave them out too long and you want to watch that they don't get green they start to get green the green part gets bitter uh, the, the potatoes do need to toughen their skins cure or heal for a little bit uh, about three days is what we do as for the corn from here we take it off of the stalks and then we take it down to the house for processing a lot of things we usually do outside keep all the mess outside but today it's just so hot. We're gonna probably do most things in the house, except for canning. We're still canning outside because when it's hot outside, you keep the heat outside. We don't want heat in the house anymore than we have to. All right, this is just some of the corn that we've harvested so far. They are not waiting for me, but digging right in. First, we're uh, obviously pick it out of the garden, bring it in to the house and they shuck it. A lot of times we do this outside, but it is too hot right now. So we pull it, pull it uh, off the cob. You want to show us how you do that? Yeah. Pull it down and snap the bottom off. Mm -hmm. Throw it in there. Put the corn in the one bag and the husk in the other. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
That's how it's done. Next thing we got to do with it is wash it off, rinse it off, make sure we get all the silk off as much as possible. There's always a little bit left over. Getting the goodies out of it. Next, we cut it off of the cob. We also have a corn uh, cob thing. You just slide them across that and it pulls the kernels off, drops them right into a bowl for you real nice. From the bowls, the corn gets put raw into the jars. Now this is sweet corn. You don't really have to do anything to it. We just put it straight into jars. Add a little bit of what? What do you add? Just a little bit of water, just plain water, filtered water. Yeah, and sea salt if you want. A little bit of sea salt if you want it. And uh, after that, we just jar it or can it, I guess, according to uh, the instructions in the canning book. Here's a riddle for you to figure out by the end of this video. What word actually becomes shorter by adding two letters? What word? actually become shorter by adding two letters. this station what are we doing down here we take the corn that's been taken off the cob and we stick it in the jars and then we put the lid and rings on it we raw pack the corn we just stick it in there raw you basically cook it whenever you're canning and it has to go in a pressure canner I think the book says something like an hour and a half in the pressure canner that's a long time. So if you're cooking your corn first and then canning it, I mean, you're, you're not going to get much uh, by the time it's done, you know. So we raw pack and then it cooks while it cans in the canner. And this is a sweet corn, so we don't really do anything to it. We don't add anything. We just put it in like this. It's organically grown. So this is how we can our corn. If you do anything differently, please leave a comment below and let us know how you prepare your corn to can. All right, so this is our propane stove. We use this for canning. We do all our canning outside so the house doesn't get hot. So in this situation, we're using a pressure canner if you're familiar at all with pressure canners, you might notice ours is an All-American. We're not anything with them, but they make really the, about the best pressure canner that there is. I wouldn't use any other. I would just use theirs. Uh, anyway, it's a, I guess a little plug for them, not 
you know, not that we get paid for it or anything. Anyway, you uh, put your water in. You only need about two inches of water, I think, inch and a half, two inches, something like that, in the bottom of these. And uh, you put it on, and you got to get it hot. Got to get it to boil. So in the house right now, they're filling our jars of corn with boiling water. And uh, whenever they're done with that, they'll bring those out here and uh, we'll put them in uh, to the canner. Now you saw me put the lid on and screw it down a little bit. I only did that basically to, to keep the heat in, get the water boiling, get it hot, get it going. Uh, so when they bring it out, it doesn't take quite as long to get it back up. So whenever they bring the corn out, we'll put them in the pressure canner and they will uh, boil in there for an hour, I think it says an hour and 25 minutes. And uh, anyway, that's once it reaches full pressure. It'll be 10 pounds of pressure on this. So once it reaches 10 pounds of pressure, then it's, we start counting from that time. And then of course you have to wait for it to cool down before you start your next batch. Okay, well the jars are ready. Time to put the jars in. You may have seen me put these up. I did not really tighten them down. I just put them up so the fire doesn't get them. Don't know if you can see a couple of them have gotten really overheated. If I just leave them dangle down the sides, they get really hot. So there's there's no pressure in here. I mean, yeah. Anyway, it's time to stick the jars in. So our canner holds seven jars. We can process ten, uh, seven at a time. And these will process for an hour and 25 minutes once it gets up to pressure. Supposed to make sure they're not exactly touching, which I don't know how you can really assure that they're not, but uh, you can get pretty close, I guess. Now that they're in there, now we put it in. We'll uh, screw these down a little bit. There's a, a certain way to tighten them. First I start by just putting them on, get them a little bit snug, but then when you actually tighten, you go around like you do, uh, say you're putting a tire on a car, you know, you, every other one until it's tight. And then it's a matter of letting it reach boiling. So then it has to vent, so you let steam come out of this vent here, uh, it's supposed to be for about seven minutes, and then you put the weight on. There's numbers on the weight, for, like this needs 10 pounds, so that hole is equaling 10 pounds. You put that on, and that'll maintain 10 pounds of pressure. You have to adjust your heat then, of course, because this thing will rattle. You don't want it to rattle non-stop, you know, it's supposed to rattle every couple times a minute. All right, steam is coming out of the vent over here. It's been coming out for about about seven minutes. So now we're gonna put that on. Just drop the weight on, on 10. And we'll give it a few minutes here and that thing will start to rattle. And when it does, we'll just adjust it so that it rattles every couple minutes and not continuously. Also, we'll see on the gauge here, the number will go up to the 10 and then we'll know it has 10 pounds of pressure. Okay, as far as canning for today, we're just going to do two rounds of jars. We can only do seven quarts in our canner at one time, and we just have one pressure canner, so two rounds actually takes a long time uh, because you have to get it up to temperature, up to heat, and then uh, up to 10 pounds of pressure and then have to maintain that 10 pounds of pressure for an hour and 25 minutes uh, and once that's done of course it needs to cool down uh, get down in pressure before you can take the lid off and remove them and then you put the next batch in and you have to get it up to temperature and up to pressure before you can start you know your next hour and 25 minutes so this is a long process so 
for today we're just going to do two rounds in the canner and we're going to save uh, some of it for maybe tomorrow and we're probably going to freeze a lot of this as well. Now the answer to our riddle. What word actually becomes shorter by adding two letters? That word is short. You add two letters, E-R, it becomes shorter. For our potatoes, this is how we do it. Uh, these are some that we had after, uh, a few days ago. They had uh, opportunities to sit outside for the brought them in for the evening, took them out the next day, brought them in in the evening, and of course, the third day then outside. So after they dry then for three days, we bring them in, and this is how we do it. We lay them in a box. We make a uh, one layer in a box, and then we put a piece of cardboard on top of that, and then we'll put another layer of potatoes on top of that, and then another layer of cardboard, and then another layer of potatoes. And we do that, and we'll fill the box. And they've always stored well for us that way. We try to give a little bit of space between each one, and they store fine. I know other people do other methods, uh, straw and different things, but uh, we don't like uh, all that in the house, so this is how we do it. As far as that cardboard goes, we don't really spend money on that. Uh, we order a lot of things online, a lot of different things get delivered to the house. And uh, so we constantly seem to have boxes. We save all that. We strip the tape off and save those boxes, break them down and uh, store them flat. And then whenever we need them for projects like this, we do that. We also line our garden in between our rows. We'll put uh, cardboard boxes in between the rows to start out with. It helps keep the weeds down and uh, it helps helps that there's not so much weeding to uh, happen throughout the season. But the uh, cardboard does break down, it does decompose, and usually by about the time that we're harvesting, a lot of the cardboard is uh, rotted so much that, you know, it's, it's decomposed quite a bit. And by the beginning of next spring, it'll be gone. Well, that's it for today. If you like this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe to our channel if you have not already. And uh, if you want to have notifications when we do put out a new video, then hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching.